How are we doing? Hey, you hold on a minute. Join. Look at the Gospels and the cross. Yes.
in baptism, coming to receive the sign of the cross. We now share the partition of the sin of it. And we pray. O oh God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant Tommy, from whom today we perform the funeral and fraternal offices of burial. We ask your Lord to give him a share with your chosen ones and the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may become before your face through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we listen to God's word. first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does a worker gain from his or her toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on his people. God has made everything beautiful in its time. And this is the word of the Lord. And, uh the Lord is my shepherd. There is shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. To revive my drooping spirit, he guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook your stuff with these you give me comfort the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want you have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my father my head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. Surely his goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. 
might have just run through the responsorial psalm here. Your response is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. Your response. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And your response. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand, happiness forever. And your response. You are my inheritance. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has shown us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are, because the world refused to acknowledge him. Therefore, it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless your Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, that is what pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all your labor and overburdened, and I'll give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. A special welcome to you all, and in particular to Peggy, Jared, and Joe, who are present with us today via YouTube connection. So, welcome from New York, especially to the parish of Freshford in the barony of Cranagh and the Diocese of Ossory. As we gather in faith, to pray for the happy repose of the soul of Tommy. On behalf of the faith community of Freshford, I extend my deepest sympathies again to Peggy, to George and Joe, 
to his loving family, his brother-in-law, sisters-in-law, cousins, neighbours, and his many friends in New York and here in Freshford. A special welcome to Cathy, who has journeyed with me in the preparations for Tommy's funeral. When we gather an occasion like this, while sad, we end up reflecting on a person's life. There are many memories about the person whose remains lie here before us. And some people have shared those memories with me. And again, for myself, if I was talking to some people in the parish community, and there was a constant theme about Tommy, a gentleman, a kindly man. And they spoke of meeting with him and the way he lived his life here in Freshford for 54 years. He met Peggy, who was nursing in Waterford, and romance blossomed. They fell in love, and they were married in 1974. Why does that year ring a bell for me? It was the year I was ordained. They talked about his involvement in business in the community. And then he set up his own hardware shop where two lovely boys were born to them, Jared and Joe. And I was getting the briefing, the word Terry also surfaced. So I was wondering now who Terry was. And it turned out Terry was a small dog, a dog that had his paws worn off going for Sunday walks. Certain other common surfaces as well, ones that people remembered, one in particular when he was running his shop. At times people required certain objects, hardware objects. They'd call back to see if he had it in stock and his stock answer apparently was, it's on the train. So Tommy is on the train now to meet his father in heaven. Again, it's terribly sad for us that Peggy and his two sons can't be here with us today. When they left Freshford to New York in 1984, they took, took up residence about five minutes from the beach. Tommy loved New York, and he and Peggy and family enjoyed traveling the vast country, each year a different place. And the connection with Freshford remained strongly. Why? He fell in love with Broadway and with shows that recalled his own days with the famous well-known pantomime of Freshford. Freshford always remained dear to his heart. And we're here today to return him to his beloved Freshford. When we reflect on a person's life, many emotions touch our hearts. We end up wondering about life itself, about death also. But for us as believers, our faith is also our consolation. Because we discover through the pages of the gospel that the God in whom we worship and believe in is a God of love and mercy. And as we look back on a life long lived, I gather 91 next birthday, that 
we can become very conscious of our faults and failings. But the God whom we worship is a God of mercy and love. And what we discover is that he's patient enough to overlook our faults. As I said, death brings sadness and a flood of memories. But with regard to Tommy and his family, the life that he has lived, and the people whose lives he has touched, are a consolation in itself. Today we gather in friendship to ask God to take care of Tommy now that his earthly life is over. Tommy, a man who was so valuable to us and so valuable in the sight of God that he's destined to enjoy everlasting life forever. Tommy has enjoyed a long life. And I gather his age was quite meaningless to him. We realize again that God's ways are not our ways. But as we commend Tommy to God's embrace, may he enjoy eternal life forever. May he rest in peace with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we stand together as we offer the prayers of the faithful. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. We now ask him in confidence to save all his people, living and dead. Father, into your hands we commend the soul of our brother Tommy. Look gently upon him and bring him home to your kingdom, where death will be no more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you today for Tommy's life and presence with us. At this Eucharist, we celebrate that life and love which was your gift to him and to us. Lord, now that you have set Tommy free from life's pain, welcome into the peace and love of your kingdom to enjoy his forever his presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, praise We pray especially today for Tommy's family, his loving wife, Peggy, and his sons, Jared and Joe. We entered into their loneliness and loss. We ask you, Lord, to watch over, comfort, and console them. Give them courage and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, praise At this very uncertain time in our country and in our world, we pray for those who are sick in body or mind and those affected by COVID-19. May the healing love of Christ fill them with courage and hope. Lord, hear us. Let us remember all the faithful departed especially the deceased members of the Connery and Coakley family. May everlasting peace and happiness be theirs with Tommy, be theirs with Tommy. In the Lord's own house shall they dwell forever and ever. Lord, hear us. As we commend Tommy to the Lord, we pray that God will grant peace to all who have died in the face of Christ.
Lord, hear us. Lord God, you entrusted Tommy to us, and now you embrace him in your love. Comfort us, who are your sorrowing servants, who seek to do your will and to know your saving peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated for the offertory. pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Tommy. On his funeral day, we offer the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> and the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one person he chose to die, so that in your sight we might all live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we now proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And now we proclaim the mystery of faith. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Dermot, our Bishop, and people and clergy everywhere. Remember your servant Tommy, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And now as we stand together, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. We graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And we pause for a moment. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh 
with love before you, Lady of Nock, my Queen of Kings, Lady of Nock, our Queen of Kings. Lord God, the Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Tommy may come to the eternal table of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And as we prepare now for the final commendation and farewell, I'd like to thank you for your presence here today, for your participation at this sad time. A special thank you to our readers, our gift bearers, and a special thank you to our organist and our soloist. It all helps to give praise to God and helps us on our own journey through life. So now we offer our final prayers of commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Trust in God. We pray together for Tommy. And now we come to say our last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Tommy again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Christ Jesus. Oh, 
to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. <coughs> Eternal rest grant to him, O Lord, and the perpetual light live upon him. Receive your soul. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Tommy and assure in certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Tommy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers here today. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith and we all meet in Christ and we are with you and our brother Tommy forever. And now in peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
just going home. It's not far. Just.